He's back 17 years, could be on the verge of his first ever major medal. The closest he ever came was in an FA Cup final here for Everton 10 years ago, and he finished on the losing side that day. Well, so many words have been written and spoken about David Ginola in the build-up to this final. The Frenchman on his day, arguably the best, most effective and certainly the most exciting player in the Premiership. But will this be his day? Empty Durham, the man in charge, the first Football League official for many years to be given the final. Cotton Hutchback get the game underway in the white shirts, Leicester in blue, of course. And the pitch littered in blue and white from all those first balloons that were let off as the teams came out. A very dramatic scene that was. Well, looking quickly, I talked about Robbie Savage. Hi. Well placed near the uh, near post, and Leicester get the first corner of the game. Two and a half minutes gone. Well, that was a chance for Emil Heskey. He looked to play offside here. I didn't think. I'm not sure he is. I don't think he is offside. A good decision, but he didn't really get in there, drive in the way we've seen Heskey do. He was a little bit tentative to me, Alan, when he got in there. Well, Leicester always one of the more effective teams from set pieces, particularly if the delivery is right. Elliot, Walsh. Heskey, Taggart, all problems for Tottenham to deal with here. Elliot spinning away on the near post, trying to find room, a little deflection took it back towards Taggart, who shoots his hand up, claiming I think that there might have been a handball there. Play on is the decision. Guppy's cross. Taggart still up from the preceding corner. And finally Carr gets his head. What a challenge, but the danger hasn't gone yet. Hollerford. Savage. Goal kick. Well, I can't help thinking of it. Emil Heskey, Allen would have just pushed this once and hit it. Yeah, it's the best opportunity of the match. They work it really well. Cotty to Savage. So calm with a rear error. Goes to ground. Misses the ball. But not quite the sharpness of the match fitness there. Vega does ever so well. Right. Ferdinand makes a run to the near post, Everson was behind him and once more it was the Northern Ireland international Jerry Taggart who came between the two of them. Great skill in that tight touchline position from Ginola and then he wasn't going to let Elliot settle, Elliot was hoping to guard the ball out. Well, he did well. Most of the Spurs players inside the six-yard box here and Keller made a great catch. to the far post the referee points there was anticipation from George Graham and the Tottenham fans thinking that he was going to point to the penalty spot. well it was a clash Alan, no doubt about that Nielsen and Ullathorn come together this is lovely play from Les Ferdinand it's the first time the Spurs have really got in behind Leicester but watch the top of the screen there is certainly a clash I think accidental looking at that came and claimed the previous Darren Anderson corner. Let's see what he can do with this one. It's over his head, over everyone. Can put it into the ball, so important. And the delivery is good, and Keller was on his toes to make the save from Stefan Everson. Good spread across the six-yard box from Tottenham. Four players all going in and attacking it. From near post to far, all it depends on then is Anderson providing delivery. He did so He's just a little bit behind Stefan. Turn. Savage, now Olathorne, three in the box here for Leicester, if Olathorne can get his cross in, he leads it instead to Savage, and it wasn't the best ball, he made him work hard, but he's done well against Anderton, tries to pick out Cotty on the near post, Anderton recovered with the tackle, and Leicester have a corner. Well, that's good play, and then poor play from Savage. I mean, this is a poor tackle from Anderton, but Savage won. It's on the near post, Welsh coming in near the penalty spot, Elliot got the touch on there, and then came off, a Spurs player, I think it might have been Everson for another corner. Decent ball. Well, I'm not sure what his goals record is in Germany, but that is certainly a chance. And a match of few chances, it sits up quite beautifully at the edge of the box, it's there to be hit. An awful lot of players in his face. By Ian Walker, who fumbled it first time, but was active.
absolutely certain with his handling when it looked as though Tony Cotty was about to punish his mistake. Lovely strike here from Arthur. And if you'd expect the goalkeeper spells it, Cotty's first to react. Many, many of his goals through the years have come from this. So quick to react, Tony Cotty. He's on his way, but full match to the goalkeeper. Not only good, but brave. Oh, he should have kept coming, Alan. Savage was there, making a lovely little run on his right-hand side. He's ambitious. Trying to bend it with his right foot into the top corner. And if he'd have just kept coming across here, Robbie Savage was offering his... Edinburgh was attracted to the ball. Is sent off and joins a very small list of players who have been dismissed in a major cup final. Well, I was going to start thinking now, George. But this is the incident. There was a coming together there, and then it's what happens after that. That's stupid. Absolutely stupid. He only has just caught, but you can't lift your hands like this. We know now how hot referees are and things like that. It's a moment of madness from Justin Edinburgh. It's a long, long walk. Whenever you get sent off here at Wembley, it's an agonisingly lengthy journey. And he'll get the abuse of all the Leicester fans as he makes his way down the tunnel. But it's what he's done to his team's prospects that will really be concerning him and George Graham now because they have about 27 minutes at least to last out against an upbeat Leicester City team with only 10 men. Again, this time, uh, Ramon Vega and David Ginola takes Tottenham on the counter-attack. Ferdinand. Referee got him away, but deflected it too, as Ferdinand anyway. Ginola. Across two flats, straight to Elliot. This is Lennon. Every Spurs player will need to work that little bit harder now as Campbell wrestles Heskey to Genoa, left to right. Knows exactly what he's doing, has a little look, drops it right on Everson's head. It's just one touch and hit for Les, and know what he's trying to do. He was never quite round the ball enough. But the target is hit, beat the goal. A one of your strike, they've got 3v2 at the back, not now. Target just breaks off the wall, but he's either got to hit the target, the goal, or the three ones who are going to attack it. It is indirect, this free kick. Sits it in towards Campbell on the back post, Taggart heads it away, and Cotty completes the clearance and prevents a corner. Nielsen looking for Vega this time. Walsh got there first. Aaron Anderton. The target again, Vega. It's come out to Campbell. And Elliot for the second time gets it away. It was so close that, in fact, some fans at the other end of the stadium thought it had gone in. Well, certainly the one. Uh, nil, Spurs nil. Certainly got the range if he wants to hit this on target. But it is indirect. Straight into the wall. Here by Guppy, on the far post is Marshall, and the header back into the danger area, but Vega was, again, just a step in front of Tony Cotty. Oh, gets caught the follow-through. There's what went on after that. I mean, it's all handbags, really. Well, I th certainly think that Freund made the most of that challenge. Well, it was a little bit of contact. It's one of those where you both go for the ball, and you just get caught the follow-through. I think he's probably dealt with that quite well, the referee and linesman to get between them. Into the last five minutes, still nil-nil. Difficult ball for Elliot to deal with. Hollathorne thumps it clear. Marshall. Savage joins in. That's not a bad ball either, if Cotty can reach it. 
and Walker slips at the vital moment and Cotty clears into an absolutely unguarded yeah. six-yard box and it went straight to Carr. Well, what a bizarre made, moment. He hasn't made many mistakes, Ian Walker, but that was almost catastrophic. A little shake of the head, he's gotten away with it. Deep breath, he knows. Now Darren Anderton for Tottenham. Easy save for Keller. Certainly wasn't now comes to meet it near post, but Elliot prevented the cross. Three minutes. Three minutes of stoppage time. Alan Nielsen throw in, and that usually spells danger. Looking for the head of Ramon Vega, who did well. Campbell turned it goalwards, headed away by Taggart. Cotty's challenge, Carr with the cross. Ginola. Pushed over Olofon, Leicester's free kick, right decision. It's a chance in the box. The head of Walsh and keep going. And Keller, it is a goal. Would you believe it? In stoppage time, Alan Nielsen has scored and maybe secured the Worthington Cup for Tottenham Hotspur. What drama. What a finish. Leverson's had one of his quietest days. But what a time to pick to produce your most important moment of the match. It's a lovely surging run. Really drives it. Steve Walsh really goes at him. He's no real support. It's going to cross the goal. And there's Alan Nielsen. We talk about his drive into the box. And so late in the game, even with 10 men, Nielsen's desire to get in there just in the hope that something would happen and this time George you can go up it is in and it will surely surely be a winning goal well Leicester got a very dramatic late equaliser here against Middlesbrough two years ago but I can't see that they've got time now because we've already had Three and a half minutes, more than the allotted 90. And if you remember, One minute to go, Freund's just asked him. Yeah. In men. There's another example of what you can do if you really want to, Alan. And Ferdinand earns Tottenham a corner. No rush. He's done it again, isn't he? Oh, George Graham's incredible record in this competition. Looks like... And another successful chapter added. Leicester dispirited now. A goal that late is usually a killer goal. Now that must be it now. Ferdinand in the corner and that's where he'll want to keep the ball. He won't care where he goes. He's gone out for a goal kick. Maybe when the ball's in flight here, the referee will choose that moment to blow the final whistle. Martin O'Neill waving everyone upfield. That's it. It's all over. The 1999 Worthington Cup final has ended in victory for Tottenham Hotspur. The winning goal in stoppage time by the Danish international Alan Nielsen. Scenes of unbridled joy and celebration in the Tottenham camp. And when they lost, just in Edinburgh, red carded early in the second half, many Tottenham fans, if not the players, must have feared the worst. They held on against considerable pressure from Leicester City. They came back brilliantly, but poor Tony Cotty is in tears because once again he has seen the chance of the first major medal of his career slip through his fingers. Stuart Houston celebrates with the goal scorer Nielsen. And the Tottenham fans see their remarkable Wembley record come good again. Argument about it, let's hope not. 
Yeah, it would be unbelievably petty at this stage, wouldn't it? He suffered his punishment, and that will live with him for the rest of his life. But so Campbell is about to receive the Worthington Cup for Tottenham Hotspur. The Leicester end of the stadium is nearly deserted already. Away to my left, the Tottenham end is a mass of colour and noise. Tottenham Hotspur, who remarkably almost went down last season. I think it was the penultimate weekend of the season before they secured their Premiership place, are back on the honours list again. And what a remarkable achievement it has been for George Graham. Tears of joy for the fans who can't quite believe it, I suspect. The unhappy months under Christian Gross, all the different managers that came and went, four different men in the hot seat in the last six years. The disappointment of being down near the bottom of the table when their arch-rivals Arsenal were carrying all before them. Well, now Spurs have restored a lot of pride to their particular part of North London. And just in Edinburgh, really in particular, enjoyed that moment. Well, they should really give him a replica, shouldn't they? His eighth League Cup final, George Graham, as player or manager. His fourth victory in the competition. And the first winner's medal he ever got. He could have used his common sense. I think uh, Justin Edinburgh got fouled and he retaliated. And it was only, it only looked as if it was a brush with his hand. You mustn't raise your hands. I think the referee could have used common sense. And then I think the referee lost it a little bit then. Nonetheless, you must have been delighted with the response of your players thereafter. Yeah, which is. I thought we actually dominated the first half. But the